welcome again for another episode of the Data Strategy Gurus podcast. Today, again, we have uh, Angelica Klidas uh, with us. I mean, Angelica, it's been a long time. Uh, last time it was more exotic. We were in Las Vegas still talking about data. But today we will, of course, have it a bit more about AI and demystifying AI literacy. Can you maybe elaborate a bit more around AI literacy and how you see that? Um, well, um, when it all started about five years ago uh, or six years ago, maybe even, we we had the amazing marketing to data literacy. And from there on, uh, we started working on new programs called data literacy. And then suddenly, you know, when uh, OpenAI launched its uh, large language model uh, or its system um, in, I think it was on the 30th of November, 2022. Um, and since then, AI has been rising to the, the max. Um, and everybody is thinking, it's new, it's new. But yeah, unfortunately, it's not new. It's already very old. And... Um, and then suddenly the term AI literacy came up and I know in the world there will be different views on it, but from my perspective, um, I don't think AI is a very good term, uh, to use. And you mean AI is not a good term to use in the sense of artificial intelligence, in the sense of AI. I know that everywhere you look at a product, the SaaS product, we have AI on top of that, where I yeah, think... Yeah, uh, well, yes, this I didn't is... mean AI as, as a technology uh, or a methodology uh, on its own, but I mean the term AI literacy suddenly came up and it's, it made me wonder... Uh, so if you hear AI literacy, what, what, what do you think about? I mean, we had data literacy there. I could feel already it's data fluency. It's understanding the data, looking at the data, working with the data. Is, do you think they mean with AI literacy, it's, it's, it's more as well of understanding how AI works or working with AI? But for me, it's, it's, it's very broad because AI is pretty complex. You have neural networks. You have the large language models. You have a lot of infrastructure. It's a pretty complex combination of, of what really is artificial intelligence as such. And it's a subdomain, in fact, of, of AI. But I feel like everybody is throwing AI if a product uses a large language model, which in my feeling is it's a part of the solution, but it's, it's not the holy grail as such. There is a, a big promise in what AI can do as such. So what do you think? Well, most people or the marketing people, let's, let's call them like that, um, mean with when they talk about AI literacy. Well, to be honest, uh, uh, some people say it's the holistic view of uh, what AI can do for your company. Um, we see many different uh, definitions of AI literacy uh, around the world when you look at Coursera or DataCamp or even other auth authors of books. And so on. Uh, I don't believe there are many books around the topic AI literacy just yet. Um, but I think it's, 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 it's like a marketing term that is used to address, oh, hey, I know, I know something about AI. Um, well, to be honest, uh, I know the concepts of AI. I know what I can do with AI. I can think of pretty good ideas what to do, but my colleagues at the Office of the Business Data Challenges they are much better in actually making the things work, right? And I, I, well, yeah, AI literacy, it makes me sometimes a little like, hmm, or it makes me a little um, anxious or not anxious is not the correct word, but a little bit upset uh, because when you then, a lit, uh, and when you learn about those books or those websites and then, and then the next sentence is, okay, but when you want to become AI literate, you need to be data literate. And then, then I started thinking, uh, what? <laughs> so from my opinion, um, I think everything is fueled by data and that's the basis of everything. So I think data literacy with a subset of being um, uh, more convenient in working with AI solutions like the large language models, like Gen AI or other solutions like... Uh, um, using AI methodologies to develop new products and so on. Um, I think that's a better term 
And my colleagues, you know, they last week, they, I think it's the last week or the week before that, they, uh, they were talking about AI in an article, I believe, uh, in our WhatsApp group. And, and my colleague Hitty, uh, whistles, uh, and I think she is really brilliant when it comes to AI solutions and thinking about, uh, how to develop them. Um, she said, maybe it's not literacy, but maybe it's adoption that should be part of the, of the description of it, it should be AI adoption and in the broadest form. Because yeah. statistics is also, you know, something like it comes from working where they are. We get results. We need to be able to read statistical information. Um, but that's also a part of data literacy. So yeah, adoption. But adoption is that you already know what what to do with it, what it can do, and how to do it. Uh, I think that's that's already where you are in that that mm. phase. A literacy yeah. points more to where awareness of really understanding uh, what can we do with it, how can we build it, uh, what are the implications, what are the risks, um, mm. all of all all the ethical discussions, all the governance around it. These are important parts that you need to be aware of. If just jumping on AI, I mean. If you take the Microsoft, the Azure platform, you have a lot of cognitive first services, the same for AWS, where you can build these AI solutions. But if you're not looking at privacy, security, uh, putting company information into the cloud, that's a big risk. And I think there is an important educational part. It's not because people are stupid, but educational of helping them understand of, of what is possible with the solutions. And yeah, finding the right term around that. I think adoption is, is a nice direction. I had recently a discussion on data literacy where they say, it feels like, yeah, people can't read and you're teaching them to read. And if you say, well, we're going to help you become data literate, they feel a bit offended because it feels like they don't know nothing. Uh, but in fact, they're smart people as well. They just are in a new type of domain, data management, where they need to look at the data in a certain way, like you said, how we do that uh, with business intelligence solutions as well. You get a report, uh, you learn how to interpret it. Uh, the same with with, uh, and, um, with statistics, that you understand what these numbers mean. And this is the bigger picture, I think, the same for, for AI literacy as, as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't like to use the term anyway. Um, but sometimes from a market, marketing perspective, because you want to sell your trainings, your products, uh, and so on, or your services, um, I think uh, from that point of view, it's okay to use the term data and AI literacy or AI literacy. But uh, I think the definition should be uh, something else because you now we had the discussion with, uh, I had the discussion with um, Donald Farmer as well. You know, he's, he, he's one of my heroes. And he, he also said, do you think I'm dumb when you say you need to be literate? And I think, yeah, you have a point. Uh, but as, as you can't be driven by data because you have to do something with it. Um, uh, so data driven is not a good word. AI driven is maybe not a good word or AI literacy is not a good word. Even data literacy is maybe not a good word, but we use it more from a marketing perspective, right? And as long as we are able, and I know you do the same as I do, as long as we try to tell the stories right and help people to understand how to work with data, how to read graphs, how to build them, how to use them on trustworthiness in your data pipelines, uh, build good data products that can help at the end uh, develop also beautiful AI solutions. I think we are on a good way. As long as we, as the professionals, tell the story right it's it's more marketing i think yeah that's, that's the same feeling i got i mean if we're discussing amongst uh, the professionals people really in the domain of ai data i see everybody has the same concerns they're addressing the concerns we're talking about it so already the people really in the scene are uh, working ar around these these topics and moving forward we know there is a, a bad part on all the the big amazing solutions as well but it's the same in business. I mean, there is a, a dark as well, uh, and that's the same with technology that it's it's being used uh, for the for the wrong reasons. Um, but yeah, we, this is a part of what we have to do. Instead of only building the solutions, uh, making people aware and and sharing our journeys as well, where we failed and how to do that. I mean, 
I'm testing out large language models right now to the, help me in development. And I thought, oh, this is going great, fantastic. Two, three days, oh, almost there. And then you see it starts drifting off and you say, hey, what's happening? And you, <laughs> mess up, you mess up the complete code. What I've learned is I have to go back to the practices I've learned as well back in the days. Be precise, be consistent. Don't try to develop everything at the same time. Do it unit by unit, step by step. Don't go too fast. Just be patient. Do the testing. Just the main principles of software engineering, what you have to apply. So by using the large language models and seeing how immature they are still in helping you in doing code development helps me become a better programmer at the same time. It's the same if, if you're writing marketing uh, material. You learn how to formulate things in a better way thanks to the large language models. But like you said in a previous discussion, if you feed it bad information, this is what you get out of it. You get bad AI solutions, bad AI products, bad AI uh, results as well. So I think, yeah, um, getting those those results right is something we still have to learn. Like like prompting is the new art, right? I uh, I I believe that you can ask simple questions, but when your um, when your question is more concise and more accurate. Uh, uh, you get you get amazing answers, uh, but therefore you have to learn how to craft a good prompt in this case. And yeah, if you yes. don't, I remember we had a discussion. Do you remember that you have sent me that picture of the man, and it took you some time uh, before it was something that you liked at that moment or that you wanted at the moment, and that your prompt needed to be concise and more precise, and then corrected. But even when you work with tools like uh, uh, ChatGPT and you ask for a picture with Dali, um, um, sometimes it just don't, doesn't do what you want it to do. And, and even though your prompt, you th when you read back to your prompt, you think, well, I was concise, I was precise, I did exactly what I needed to do, but still the image is not what I want. Uh, so yeah, it's still, it's still fed with things, but I also believe, you know, there is a lot of um, um, information fed into OpenAI or in ChatGPT or in the other large language models. And if the information that we add, the questions that we add, uh, or the pictures that we ask um, are not precise, not concise, and they're actually rubbish, then you get the same phenomenon like with data management. It's garbage in and garbage out at the end. Yeah, it's the same in business. I think if you can get bad products, you get bad results in the same way. Uh, but we're not so aware. We think uh, software is, is the golden egg. AI is the golden egg and, and it solves all the problems for us. But it's still we human beings at, at the steering wheel to make them work in the way that, that we want it. And I always love these, these evaluations of the large language models where, for example, they're testing GPT-40 uh, mini and then they they just ask the same questions, but the GPT-40 is has more reasoning already built in than the than the mini uh, things. And there you see exactly what you say. If you are concise, complete, a lot of context, then you get the right results. But it's the same if we have a human discussion and and you ask your assistant to do something, she already knows or he already knows your schedule already knows the business context so there is a lot of implicit knowledge what is available and based upon that you make the right decision on acting uh, and this is still lacking in, in a lot of AI solutions we're progressing I see a lot of types of uh, approaches on getting there uh, RAG is one of these solutions but there are other solutions as well to give that context to these uh, AI solutions and getting uh, better results uh, in such a way so for yeah, me, exactly. becoming literate is, is, is great um, in, in, in every technology because there is still a lot of lack and, and disconnect between uh, talking between the techies and, and the business people and, and understanding each other of what you want to achieve and why sometimes things, things take uh, time or are pretty difficult to achieve. Um, so yeah, I think exactly. communication is, is still pretty important. Um, we're coming up to the end of our podcast uh, again, uh, Angelica. Time flies when I'm talking to you. So, <laughs> do you have some uh, 
takeaways from our discussion or becoming AI literate? Um, in, in Dutch, we say, star je niet blind op, uh, op, op AI. Uh, so don't get fixated on AI. I think from that point of view, start also at the beginning. You know, people will, uh, uh, organizations suddenly want to start with AI while they still don't, do not have their BI in place. So find that balance again. Um, but also do not forget that AI is also fueled by data. So you have to think of Data management, that's the third takeaway. It has everything to do, AI has everything to do with data governance, data management, data quality, and so on. It's a chain. And that when something at the beginning is broken or not entered in the correct way, at the end, we will have issues. So garbage in, garbage out. And the fourth one, I think, is that, uh, and that was the biggest lesson uh, uh, I've ever learned at the beginning uh, in 2015. 15, 14, when we started working on nice solutions in AI, um, AI will do you, will do exactly what you ask it to do or what you train it to do. Um, and it's actually, and what we do on all those open AI tools or whatever that are around the world nowadays, it learns from us by our doing, our behavior. And I think uh, those are the points that we need to take into account in the things that we do when it comes to AI. Yeah, I think these are marvelous uh, takeaways and ideas which we have to nurture and keep them uh, with us to make the best of uh, AI. Angelica, it was uh, once again great uh, to have you on the show and let's go for the AI solutions. Thank you. Thanks again for your time, Aif. You're welcome.